إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد I would like to welcome all of you once again, inshaAllah ta'ala, we continue reading from Al-Minha Rabbaniya, the explanation of the Hadith of Jibreel. <coughs> the Hadith of Jibreel was narrated to us by Al-Faruq, Abi Hafsin, Umar al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu. In this hadith, we were in a point, we're still in the beginning of the hadith, the explanation of the hadith. Uh, the last point we stopped at as the Sheikh he highlighted some of the etiquettes that the students of knowledge should display. Some of the etiquettes that the students of knowledge should display while attending the circle of knowledge. That we as a human everything that is important to us we make preparation for it anything that is important for you just you can pick any thing that is important in your life you don't just get up and go to it you prepare yourself seeking knowledge is very important for us because it teaches us how to worship Allah correctly it teaches us about the path of Allah it teaches us about what's good and what's bad Aynam, teach us about Tawheed versus Shirk, Sunnah versus Innovation. Teach us about the history of those whom Allah is pleased with amongst the prophets and the righteous and the companions so that we can emulate their example. And he teach us about the way of the wicked and the losers and the rebellious and the criminals so that we can stay away from that. So we should prepare ourselves. You don't just come to the class because you have nowhere to go. That's not going to benefit you. You should look at the classes in the masjid. If you can attend each one of them, that's good. But if you're, mashallah, you're, you have to go to work or whatever, you cannot attend every single night or every single class, then choose which class that fits with your schedule and prepare for it come ready for it so that's what's going to make a difference okay because the benefits is not in accordance to the attendance but it's according to the presence everybody can attend but are everybody is a present and you know what I mean it's not enough to just be present on the books. Oh, he was here. Yeah, I can tell. He was sitting next to me. Okay, he was sitting next to you with his body, but his mind, where, where was it? <laughs> huh? Yeah, somebody may be sitting right next to you, but his mind is all over the place. Is this a person like this going to remember something from the class? He's not going to remember anything from the class. Even though the people, they said, oh yeah, the brother attend every single class with us. But his mind wasn't in here. He was thinking about money, about this, about that. Prepare yourself, Ya Khwan. So Jibreel alayhi salam, he came in the form of a person, of a man. And he sat in that very specific way. And he came in a very specific appearance so that we can take notes. And we try to follow that example. And he began to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam a number of questions. The Sheikh says from this that also a benefit, if you want to ask a teacher, anyone that you want to ask, you, you don't just like to ask them. Some people have no etiquette. The teacher is giving a class, somebody show up, ah, oh, excuse me, I got a question. That's not etiquette. You have to wait. 
And if the person you want to ask, you yeah, can get closer to them. Get closer to them and and wait. If they are busy, you wait until they are not. So once they are ready for you, then you can ask your question with while taking in consideration those etiquettes. Keep in mind now, Sheikh Fawzani says, Jibreel alayhi salam, who came in the form of a man, he came and asked the Prophet sallallahu this question while he already know the answers. Ata yas'al wa huwa alim bil jawab. He came and asked those questions while he already know the answers. Can somebody know, or have a hint, or any idea why he did that? He already know the answer, but he still came and asked those questions. Now, Ahsan, Abdullah. Ahsan mean you very good. Uh-huh. No. 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 Can you repeat what he said? What's your name? Can you repeat what Abdul Rahim said? Did you hear Abdul Rahim? Or tell me what Abdul Rahim said. Hey, I was talking to you. What's your name? Abu Bakr. Can you repeat what Abdul Rahim said? What Abdul Rahim said? To teach the people, okay? So Jibreel alayhi salam came to teach the people, all right? So from that, that's what the Sheikh Salah al Bawzan says. He says, yeah, this is one of the great ways to teach through questions and answers. That's why you find, alhamdulillah, some of the books of the ulama, they are in the form of questions and answers. Like, for example, Fiqh al-Ibadat. Fiqh al-Ibadat of Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan. It's translated into English. Very good book. A great book. Because in it, the sh- they collected and they gathered the fatawa and the answers that was given by one of the great scholars of our time, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Uzaymin, rahimahullah, about the five pillars of Islam. They started in that book with fatawa of aqidah. Very important questions and answers. And then after that, they go to tahara, then to salat, zakat, then fasting and hajj. Very good book. Fiqh al-Ibadat, Sheikh, Salih, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Uthaymin, Rahimullah. And many other books, like al uh, ajwib al-Mufida ala as'ilat al-Manahij al-Jadida, Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan. There is a book, the al uh, ajwib al-Mufida, Beneficial Answers, on questions about innovative methodologies. Very, very important book. And it's in English. It's been out there in English for years. This book teaches you the manhaj of the Salaf, the manhaj that we supposed to be on, the manhaj that the Prophet Sallallahu left the companions upon, the only manhaj and methodology that is correct. And also, it deals with clarifying the the deviant methodologies of those people or groups that oppose the way of the Sahaba, oppose the truth and the way of the Sahaba. It's very important. That's why the ulama, they mention, if a person, for example, is in a gathering, if a person is in a gathering, is in a circle of knowledge, and he has a question, but he knows the answer. But because the person who's conducting the class did not elaborate on that very important point that's going to benefit the community, then a person can ask that question. Can ask that question so to benefit the people. And this is a great thing. That's why the ulama says, when the people ask questions, they ask for different reasons. Some of them are good and some of them are bad, based on their intentions. Some people, subhanAllah, because of their intentions is correct, and only Allah knows the intentions, because they want good for themselves or for others. From that one question, a great 
deal of khair comes, right or wrong? Who can give me an, an example? Who can give me an example of someone who asked one simple question and yet a lot of khair, a lot of good came from that answer? Somebody know an example? No? I know, I'm this hadith, because Jibreel came and asked. I said a person, not an angel. A person, some person, not an angel. Do you know of any person who asked some questions now, madam? Fikum Barakal. Hudayfa radiyallahu anhu qal kana al-nasu yas'aluna al-rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-khair wa kuntu as'uluhu an al-shar ma khafata an yudrikani. No, but something else. Meaning that actually some questions, the answers became a book. A book that is, mashallah, people benefit from now. What question? I know. Ahsant. Naam. So, wasitiya. And tadmuriya. And hamawiya. And. Most of the many books of Sheikh al-Islam Rutaymiyyah, for example, they are books, they were actually answers to people questions. Like al wasitiya this great book, famous book, that subhanAllah, tremendous book that Muslims are benefit from. He was actually, Sheikh al-Islam, he didn't get up, Ibn Taymiyyah, who died some 700 years ago, he didn't just wake up one day and said, oh, let me write a book. The story behind that book is that he judged from Wasit. There was a place called Wasit, like a city or something, an area called Wasit. He was a judge from there. When he met Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he, he complained to him about the affairs of the people and falling into innovations, and especially uh, the spread at that time and his time of the false ideologies, especially about aqidah, the creed, because aqidah is the most important thing. Al-khata'u fil aqidah, is like al-khata'i fi ghairiya. Making mistakes in the creed is not like making a mistake in wudu or something. 